Yo, what up, people? This is Earth to Nathan here, and today we are talking about the tomato hornworm. Now, I'm out here at the Prairie View A&M University farm, and we're going to go go ahead and do a walkthrough of this tomato patch and look for some of our little caterpillar friends and talk a little bit about what do they actually do in your garden and how are they helpful or hurtful. I am going to go through their biology and life cycle as well as some cool facts and talk to you guys about how you can actually raise them on your own and a lot of schools and other educational institutions do actually raise them and so you guys can as well now before we get into that uh your daily reminder to please like subscribe and of course comment on the video uh, if you are interested in this type of content now to get started i do want to mention that the tomato horn worm even though it has the, wor the word worm in its name is actually a caterpillar now we actually do see a couple of uh, different kinds of species of insects and caterpillars on the farm here, uh, including monarch caterpillars. Of course, there's cabbage uh, eaters as well. But today we are focusing on those that feed on the tomatoes, specifically the tomato hornworm, as I said before. I do see a couple species actually, or a couple of specimens here on the plant, and I'm gonna go ahead and take a look. So as you guys can see, um, we have a very small uh, caterpillar right here feeding on a leaf. Uh, it looks like uh, as the sun is coming up, they're beginning to bask, and that just means they're taking in sunlight. Now, to start off with a little bit about morphology, uh, this is a caterpillar, which means it is the young version of an adult moth. The uh, five-spotted sphinx moth, in particular, will look for tomato plants like these using the scent, and you can actually smell when you're around tomatoes, you can smell the scent of the leaves. And that is what the moths use to actually track uh, the, the plants. And so once that's done, the moth, after it's mated, will actually come down here, find a small leaf, and simply just lay its egg in that middle vein or somewhere around that leaf. And that egg will eventually hatch and it will go through five different growth stages. And we entomologists call those growth stages instars. So as we are actually looking at the caterpillars today, I can talk to you a little bit about what specific instar that is. And this one here looks to be about third instar. It has a little bit more feeding to go before it continues to grow. Now, once the caterpillars have hatched, eaten their eggshell and started growing, what actually happens is as they feed, they actually have to grow a new skin underneath. Then the old skin falls away. They eat the old skin and rinse and repeat. Now, let's actually check out a larger size caterpillar because I do see two over here that are feeding out some of our leaves. And of course, I'm letting them simply because I'm an entomologist and I'm fascinated by this stuff. But you can actually see some five instar caterpillars here. Now, these guys are massive juggernauts and they are going to eat the most leaves out of any of the instars. Now, since we've talked a little bit about the life cycle, um, including how the eggs are laid, I want to go into another important point. And that point is that once a larva has reached this stage, it's getting ready to do its final molt. It's getting ready to lose its skin for the last and final time. And the reason that is, is because it's going to drop into a nice little soil patch like this one here, and it's gonna lose that skin and it's going to transform into what we call a chrysalis or a pupal form. And the pupal form is gonna rest there. It's gonna blend in with the soil and that is what's going to allow all of the juices and the DNA to mix up and transform into a moth or a butterfly if you're looking at some other species. And then that pupal form will hatch and the five spotted sphinx moth will emerge. And then, as I said before, rinse and repeat and the life cycle will begin anew after it mates and lays an egg. So that is how the life cycle of the tomato hornworm works specifically. Now, you'll, one thing you'll notice that I mentioned about uh, the pupil form falling into the soil, it doesn't actually bury itself in the soil here. It's just going to be resting right on that surface there, uh, and that's going to allow it to camouflage. The interesting thing about that is a lot of moths and butterflies will actually either hang from a leaf, uh, so they'll hang like right about here, uh, and then you'll see them pretty obviously. But actually, uh, there are some uh, species of moths and butterflies that will instead bury themselves in the ground or they'll spin a webbed cocoon. The tomato hornworm is very unique in that it does none of those things, so it's a little bit different. Now, as I said before, we, we are referring to an insect here and not a worm. And one thing you'll notice is that, as you know, insects all have six legs and you can actually see the legs right there under the head 
and then that's the mouth and then there's the eye spots there as well now here's something else that's interesting about the tomato hornworm and other caterpillars and then this is where we get into the morphology part of things otherwise known as the uh, physical attributes you'll notice there are legs that are clasped onto that branch there and those are called pro legs they're fake legs that fall off once this caterpillar becomes a moth um, and then of course you have the sphericals which are breathing holes instead of using lungs like humans and other mammals they are using of course they're inver invertebrates so they don't have the same body function as we do but they are using these spiracles to breathe so it's important for those to remain uh, unblocked and there is one up by the head as well that is not an eye that is in fact a, a spiracle as well and you can actually tell the tomato hornworm because of those very bright yellow colored spiracles but also because of those white lines that are kind of crisscrossing across the body and there's one on each segment of that caterpillar's body. And then of course, the name tomato hornworm comes both from the fact that it eats tomatoes and it's a little horn on the abdomen. Now it's kind of hard to see it, but you can see that it turns red at the tip there. And that is actually not a stinger. That's actually a fake body part. And it's there to intimidate prey and make, make other animals think that this thing is like a wasp or a snake or something that has some sort of venom or sting to it, but it does not. Now that we've gone over a little bit about morphology, I wanna talk a little bit about actually raising these caterpillars in captivity, because that is gonna be something that is actually very rewarding and fun, and I've done it myself a few times in actually raising them. And I've raised them from something like this that's very small to something that is quite large and uh, bulky like this. And then of course, once it pupates and transforms into a moth, I can release it. So the best way to actually raise caterpillars like this is to find a place like this that has plenty of these tomato worms on it. Collect one or two. As, as you can see, there's one here and there's one here, so I can easily collect these two. And it's also important to make sure that you're collecting the plant that the caterpillar has been found on. Please note that tomato hornworms will feed on tomatoes, potatoes, eggplant, anything in that nightshade family family and group of plants anything related to tomatoes that is um, unfortunately that means that whatever the plant is that the caterpillar is found on is what you actually have to use as its primary food source which means you have to have a steady source of that plant now you can see from this little uh, pan around here that I have plenty of tomatoes to actually be able to uh, feed my tomato hornworms, which means that I can come out here on a daily basis, and yes, I did say daily, to collect tomato plants because these caterpillars are going to, like if I cut a branch about this size here, they're gonna actually eat that whole branch in a single day and they're gonna be hungry. So you may have to come out more than once a day, in fact, to actually gather these. Another way you can actually handle that is by having a larger encasement with a full tomato plant in it, which means the tomato plant is still growing and fresh. Uh, unfortunately, I only have a small cage and I will actually show you that now and how, how I have that set up so that you guys can use this as sort of a beginning setup for your tomato plants. Now I've used a critter keeper from the pet store and there is a tomato leaf in there. And as you can see moving around, there's that tomato hornworm there as well. This is a great way to actually set up uh, a, a cage. You don't really need soil uh, because they're not gonna bury themselves or anything. They really just need fresh plants and they get all their water content and everything from these plants as well. So uh, that is pretty much how you would set up a habitat. Some people do indeed put soil. And as I said, if you wanna have a larger habitat, uh, that has, um, of course, you know, space for multiple caterpillars, uh, has maybe some soil so that they're a little more comfortable as well. And of course, plenty of uh, space, as I said, in tomato plants. So making sure that they pretty much have all their needs is paramount because they are relentless eaters. They are eating all day, every day, pretty much. And you're gonna run out of food if you just, if you think this branch here is gonna last the whole day for this one caterpillar, this branch will not be here by tomorrow. So it's important to make sure that you are well stocked with the plant that you need. And, and that's why I suggested for people that may not have access to plants on a regular basis, that they can actually uh, use an entire plant and buy one from the plant store and put it inside some sort of container. And that will be sufficient for handling uh, the, the needs of the tomato hornworm. Well, I thank you all for uh, coming with me on this journey and I hope to continue to do check out some more insects. Uh, and we'll do a final shot of one of our tomato worms here that's actually feeding on a leaf. And so this has been our spotlight into the tomato hornworm, otherwise known as the 
uh, five spotted sphinx moth caterpillar and they are pretty much eating machines as you can see here and I hope you all enjoyed this video. Once again, please comment, like, and subscribe and we will see you next time.